modern fiction and film, the full moon is the catalyst to the werewolf itself. Ever since the first film about werewolves, called The Werewolf of London, which was created in 1935 starring Henry Hall, the full moon has been used as a link to the werewolf's transformation in stories and films to come. However, when one delves deeper into the legacy of the werewolf, they will find that the full moon is non-existent if not seldom in original folklore. Before the full moon aspect was introduced through fictional writers, there were other methods of transformation, including wolf skin, rituals, magic, and genetics. According to Armenian lore, there are women who are condemned to spend seven years in wolf form for committing horrible sins. Typically, a condemned woman is visited by a spirit carrying wolf skin who orders her to wear the skin of which causes her to acquire irresistible cravings for human flesh. Against her former morale and sanity, in a chaotic caricature of herself, she devours each of her own children, then her relatives' children in order of relationship, and finally the children of strangers that cross her path. She wanders only at night, with doors and locks springing open at her approach. When the sun rises, she returns to human form and removes her wolf skin. The transformation is generally said to be involuntary, but there are alternative versions involving voluntary metamorphosis, where the woman can transform at will. Besides the aspect of wearing wolf skin, there is another endeavor in which the werewolf cannot transform back without leaving behind an article of clothing, such as the lay of Bisclavray. Bisclavray, a baron in Brittany, has been vanishing every week for three full days without his wife or anyone in his household knowing where he goes. Finally, after his wife had begged and begged him, he finally tells her that he is a werewolf and that he has to hide his clothing in a safe place to transform back to human form. His wife convinces him to trust her and he tells her where he hides his clothing. Another night when he disappears into the darkness, she summons a knight who has long loved her and sends him to steal her husband's clothing. When her husband fails to return, she marries the knight. A year later, the king, who was Bisclavray's friend, goes hunting, and his dogs corner Bisclavray, now fixed in wolf form. As soon as he sees the king, Bisclavray runs up to him to beg for mercy by taking the king's stirrup and kissing his foot and leg. This so astounds the king that he has his companions drive back the dogs. When the wolf returns with the hunting party, the king is delighted with the marble. Everyone at the palace grows to love the wolf for its nobility and gentleness. One day, the knight who had married Bisclavay's wife comes to the castle, and Bisclavay attacks him. Because of the wolf's previous kindness, everyone thinks the knight must have somehow wronged him. Soon after, the king goes to the forest where he had found Bisclavay. Bisclavray's wife goes to the king, and Bisclavray attacks her, tearing off her nose. A wise man points out that the wolf had never acted so before, and that this woman was the wife of Bisclavray, the one who had vanished beforehand. The king has the wife questioned, and she confesses all and gives up the stolen clothing. They put the clothing before the wolf, but he ignores it. The wise man advises them to take the wolf and the clothing into a bedchamber, and let Bisclavray change in privacy. The king restores Bisclavray to his lands and exiles his wife and her knight. The wife's children are afterwards born without noses. Hail, 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 great wolf spirit, hail. A boon I ask thee, mighty shade. Within this circle I have made, make me a werewolf strong and bold, a tear alike of young and old. These are the most popular words written down in literature throughout time and as a part of a large ritual said to transform an individual into a werewolf. The rest of this ritual involves drawing a circle of seven to nine feet in circumference, while in the middle of it burns a fire from wood consisting of larch, black poplar, or pine. Bestowed above the fire will be an iron cauldron and into it the ingredients of poppy seeds, aloe vera, henbane, hemlock, parsley, Asafoetida and selenine will be placed. Poppy seeds are a source of a medical drug known as opium. Selenine is an extract of the nightshade family, such as potatoes, and asafoetida is a type of gum resin. These ingredients would be stirred and let to simmer, and when the flames were at their highest, this incantation would be said. Elect of all devilish host, I pray you send hither great gray shape that makes men shiver. Come, come, come. Having removed their clothing and put on a wolf skin girdle, 
the devotee now rubs their entire body with a salve. Ointments that were absorbed through the skin were made from ingredients varying from camphor, aconite, aniseed, opium, poplar leaves, bat's blood and root, mixed with the rendered fat of a cat. Before the ointment begins to take effect, the man breathes in the intoxicating fumes floating from the bubbling cauldron, which prepare him mentally for the next stage of his strange ritual. Under the influence of the fumes and salve, the man falls to his knees, imploring the spirit of the unknown to bestow on him the power of metamorphosis. With his hands raised, he intones these words. I beg of you, I pray, I implore thee, the unparalleled phantom of darkness, to make me a werewolf. Fully transformed, the werewolf bounds off into the darkness. But, strong and as mean as he thinks he is, he knows that even as a werewolf he will be vulnerable. Hence, he must chant the final charm at the end of the ceremony. Melt the bullet. Pull the knife. Rot the cudgel. Strike fear in the man. Beast and reptiles they may not seize the great wolf. Lower tears from his warm hide. My word is firm. Firm against the word of strength of your house. William and the Werewolf, or traditionally known as Guillaume de Peleum, is about a man who was brought before the courts of the Emperor of Rome. William, the protagonist, loves the daughter of the Emperor from whom is being judged, and together he and Melior, the daughter of the Emperor, escape into the nearby forest dressed in bearskin. They flee because Melior is destined for a Greek prince against her will. Meanwhile, William's cousin, Alfonso, who was a prince himself, has been turned into a wolf by his stepmother's enchantments. Alfonso goes to on to provide food and shelter for both the lovers, and eventually William triumphs over Alfonso's father and wins back his kingdom. Alfonso was returned to normal and eventually marries William's sister. In another story involving the transformation into a wolf via magic would have to be the Roman scholar Pliny the Elder, quoting Uinthus. In this quote, it says that a man of Antheus' family was selected by the majority of the town folk and brought to a lake in Arcadia where he hung his clothing on an ash tree and swam across, resulting in his transformation into a wolf, a form in which he wandered for nine years. On the condition that he attacked no human over the nine-year period, he would be free to swim back across the lake to resume human form. In Galician, Portuguese, and Brazilian folklore, it is the seventh of the sons who becomes a werewolf. Sometimes it is the seventh child, a boy, after a line of six daughters. This belief was so extended in northern Argentina, where it is called La Bison, that the seventh sons were abandoned, seated in adoption, or killed. A law from 1920 decreed that the president of Argentina is the godfather of every seventh son. Thus, the state gives him a gold medal in his baptism and a scholarship until his 21st birthday. This ended the abandonments, but it is still traditional that the president godfather is the seventh son of every family. To sum things up, one aspect that may have sparked this original idea in an author to create this idea of werewolves and the full moon is that the terms lunacy and lunatic were derived from superstitious belief that the moon caused illogical and frightening behavior, or lunar activity. Thus, the words lunatic and lunacy derived from the moon itself.